Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is a really, it's a really, it's a work light kind of day. We went and did, we went to town. We tried to do some stuff in town. Tried to like switch over a driver's license, you know, basic, you know, boring stuff like that. And so, not a whole lot of time was left in the day. It sounded like the perfect day to do an experiment and a haul. The first week that we, that we got here and my sister was here, of course, the one place that we had to go is Baker Creek Seeds. So we're gonna do a little bit of a seed haul. I'm gonna show you what we got. But before we get to that, we're gonna try an experiment. Squash bugs and Japanese beetles, no joke, around here. I have teeny tiny little things. And just yesterday, I pulled off like, I think like 10 squash bugs. Can't even count how many, how many Japanese beetles they are everywhere and I've never dealt with these things before. They're still in their baby phase, most of them. Certainly not all of them. Look what I found. Ew. See I'm told that these little, the videos that I watched say that these are signs of squash bugs um because they they stick their whatever they use to pierce the stuff that's the sign that you have squash bugs if you haven't already seen them but i've seen them so of course they can't find any now i just plucked them all off yesterday Let's go find some Japanese beetles. I'm gonna link down below uh, the video that I found this technique on. And it seemed pretty promising from the video that I watched from him. Basically what he said is that you take three tablespoons of dish soap per gallon of water. We're gonna guess on the high side. He said that it's very important to get the kind that ha that is like the grease fighting kind and that like, like you don't have to use Dawn. I was reading some, some articles and stuff like that and they say that you can use Castile soap as well. So if this works, I'm gonna be getting some more Castile soap. Basically we just put it in our spray bottle, fill it up with water. very sudsy. I feel like I should have thought of that beforehand. The video was for squash bugs, but I feel like the principle, if it's true, if it's a true principle, it should be able to work for Japanese beetles too. Basically the mechanism of action for this is that things with exoskeletons, the way that they breathe, according to this video, um, the way that they breathe is like with little holes in their legs and things like that. And like the air just kind of goes in and out and flows as they move. Their bodies are covered with some kind of a, a waxy substance on it that keeps the water from drowning them. And so when you use dish soap, particularly dish soap with the grease fighting kind of like the really good kind, it the grease fighting cuts the wax coating and allows the water to drown them. That's kind of the principle behind it. Let's try it on these Japanese beetles because I have a giant bush of some wild grapes and these guys love it. Oh. See what I mean? These are plants that you want to save. Don't do this in the middle of the day. I kind of feel like they're dying. They're so pretty. I just wish they weren't so destructive. The heck is that thing? I feel like this has great promise and I'm excited about it. So when we get more squash bugs, we'll be able to try it on a bigger level and I'll tell you about it. Let's see if we can find any squash bugs on this squash plant. No squash bugs, but there's certainly ants. Let's see if it'll work on the ants, huh? All right, so these marigold starts have a bunch. So we're just gonna spray these down and hopefully they all die. 
certainly don't like it. They're crawling out of everywhere. I'm gonna call that a win-a-win. -win. We're gonna try it again in a few days when we get more squash bugs. Um, Cause I already went through and cleared all of them off yesterday. I only have, I only have four tiny plants. It's not like I have a huge population to lure them in just yet. So we're gonna have to give some time, but give it a try. If you guys have tried it, let me know in the comment section down below how successful has it been for you in alleviating squash bugs. I've seen it used for a lot of, for several different things. Since I saw that video today, I saw it done on several different things. And it's kind of a general, like if they, if they have like the crunchy exoskeleton and they breathe that way, that mechanism of action seems to work. So if you've had luck with it, let us know. So now what we have all been waiting for, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my first Baker Creek seed haul that I bought at Baker Creek. The first thing that we got, which I have not obviously done anything with yet, is we bought, they had this, uh, oh good, the AC just shut off, sourdough starter. It's a dehydrated sourdough starter. I don't have a clue how to grow celery, but I want to try and grow celery. So we got this, it's a, um, it's a Deline, Deline, De whatever. It's a celery. It looked like the best looking celery in the bunch. <laughs> So I got it. Uh, then we, <laughs> I got this. This was they. They had one of two choices that I could pick for my free seed. So I picked this one. Can't remember what the other one was. Um, let me see. Then we got this uh, Chinese cabbage, a Hilton. This is. I really want to make kohlrabi, or not kohlrabi, kimchi. <laughs> you can't make kohlrabi. You grow kohlrabi. Anyways, okay. So we got this. Uh, it's a. a sh I don't know how to pronounce that. Bok choy. It looks, it's one of the larger sizes of the bok choy. And then it can't go wrong with kale, so I got a few of them. Tronchidua, tronchidua, <laughs> no. Anyways, and then a dazzling blue kale. I think I already have this one, but you can't have enough. Uh, milk bok choy, this is one of those littler ones. I don't, I don't do a whole lot with bok choy, but I would like to. My sister grows a lot of it. Her boyfriend loves it, and so I kind of just, I want to give it a try. See what, see what, see what it's about. Uh, Red Express cabbage, Brunswick cabbage. I have tons of Brunswick cabbage. It's my favorite kind of cabbage. It is amazing. I got um, echinacea. Uh, what's that? Uh, Paradiso, Paradiso mix. I love echinacea. Echinacea just grows wild here, y'all. Like seriously, do you realize how? Like, that's amazing. It just grows wild. And I'm, I'm, I'm told that there might be a bunch of elderberries in the area also. That'd be so cool. We got some common chives, autumn beauty sunflower, cause it's a beautiful sunflower. A chocolate cherry sunflower, I love these. Aren't those gorgeous? Okay, and then we got a blue boy bachelor's button. I love bachelor's buttons, they're so pretty. And then a black boy. It was beautiful. Purple Prince Zinnia, a Kelway Golden Chamomile, Thai Sweet Basil, Parisian Basil. I'd never even seen this one. I don't even think I've seen it in their magazine. Cardinal Basil, hadn't seen that one either. Uh, Chinese Sweet Basil. We're going with a reoccurring theme, an attempt from last, my failed attempt from la yeah, last year to make myself love basil, so. And the only reason I didn't last year was because the slugs loved it more than I did. And I didn't get a chance to eat any of it because the slugs got them all. Okay, Lincoln peas. I've had these before and they're they're great. They grew really well in Washington. Hopefully they'll do the same thing here. This kind of bean, I just wanted to have like a, a yellow bean to, to look pretty and balance everything out. And then contender bean, contenders. I love contender beans. I had those last year. They grew really well. Really well. Henderson's Bush Lima Bean. I got these simply because my sister tells me I need to grow lima beans. I tried last year. I don't know what I don't know what's wrong with me. Another type. Uh, this one's Alabama Black Eyed Butter Bean. I just got it because it's cool and it sounds awesome. And then we got a Mammoth Melting Sugar Pea because that looked delicious. A Parisian Pickling Cucumber. I'd never seen this one before, so I figured I'd go ahead and give it a try. Purple Cobin Tamatillo. So we got this Sweetheart Cherry Tomato and simply because the awesome guy that was working at Baker Creek Seed um, store 
really encouraged us to get it and he showed us pictures of, of the amazing trusses of the tomatoes that were just packed on that plant. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get it just because of that. And then of course we got some golden zucchini squash, long white of Palermo summer squash, gray summer squash. I love gray summer squash. I grew those last year. They did great. A white scallop. I got this because I just, I've never bought them before. I always I always put them in my cart when I'm shopping online and then I always take them out. So I was like, you know what? They're going in my cart and they're staying there. I got some cylinder beets. I love these kind of beets. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I might not have the soil space, the soil depth to grow them. We'll find out. Uh, we got a Japanese wasabi radish because every time I tried to order them online, they were out. So now I finally got them. And then we got a few different types of carrots. We got corral carrots. These are one that Robert picked out. And these ones, these are like the little, I figured these would go really well in, this two are the same. Uh, these would go really well in our um, rocky, shallow soil. So hopefully I'll be able to grow some carrots. Same thing here, bringing up the end here with some ox heart carrots. I think I already have two packs of these. So <laughs> we're gonna have carrots this summer or this winter. That's the seed halt. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's just a seed halt. Who doesn't love a good seed halt? Especially a Baker Creek heirloom seed seed halt. So when we were at Baker Creek, it was not, it was, there was nothing really there. There was only a few people there. It was very slow. There wasn't really anything to film, nothing, nothing really. And I was just hanging out. It was like the three days or four days after we got here. So I didn't actually film anything. We just, did that. My sister also has a seed haul, so make sure that you check out her channel, the um, Hamakua Homestead. I will link it down below. The tomatoes over here are still doing just fine. I know we planned we planted them two or three days ago, and they're still doing fine. Something is still coming along and digging up the eggs that are in there. Like I said, I'm done with the eggs. I don't know what y'all do to. I know I see a lot of people out there who plant and they put the eggs in the hole, but this is the second year in a row where something has come along in different states, mind you, okay? Different states, and they've dug up my eggs. So, I'm not doing it anymore, I'm done. But anyways, aside from that, you can see here, we have a ton of space that we have at our disposal to build a garden in. So, what must we do with seeds and garden space? We need to start seeds like tomorrow, maybe the next day. So that's coming up and I'm gonna show you guys, if you guys wanna get ready for that, now is probably the time to start your fall garden. It is the end of June right now and we're gonna be starting our fall garden. We're gonna be starting all of the, the green leafies. We're gonna be starting um, everything possible that we can think of, we're gonna be starting that will go into a fall garden in a reasonable amount of space. But we got that whole area over there. We got this whole area. We got that whole area. Like y'all. We got the space to grow. We need to make the garden space, but we have the space. <laughs> I hope that you guys, if you guys are new around here, nope, no clapping your hands. No clapping your hands. Clap your hands, everybody. No, don't do that. It's just a bunch of cats running around, it's so cute. They're just curious little kittens and it's adorable. You guys are new around here. We just moved our homestead from Washington to Missouri about three weeks ago and we're just in the process of trying to get it set up as fast as humanly possible. Everything, all the craziness that is happening in the world, we want to make sure that we are as sufficient as possible and uh, we just want to make sure, that, well I just want to make sure I have a garden growing <laughs> for the fall. So uh, that's what we're doing, that's a main focus right now. But on, in addition to that I like to do all kinds of videos on usually canning, freezing, dehydrating, fermenting and all types of food preservation as well as videos on how you can actually use those foods in your cooking. If any of that sounds interesting to you and or you just want to stick around and hang out, make sure you hit this button right here. That's the subscribe button. This is what you can hit in order to be um, uh, kept abreast of what is actually happening around the homestead. Up here is a video Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're going to enjoy. This here is my last uh, Missouri vlog <laughs> video. Up here is my Missouri vlog um, playlist. Make sure you check that one out for all kinds of inspiration as what we've been doing all this time since we've been here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.